My name is Vasim Khan. I'm the Strategic Alliance uh, Director for the Department of Security and Crime Science. Welcome. Welcome to this evening discussing our various postgraduate master's programs. I'm going to be very quick. I'll just take five minutes to give you an overview of UCL and the department for those who perhaps uh, don't know a lot about us. And then I will leave you in the very capable hands of my colleagues who will talk to you about each of the courses that they lead on. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, that. Okay, so hopefully you can all see that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, so oops. the agenda for today, so I'll give a quick intro and then as I said, the course leaders will lead you through the courses and then I'll come back at the end to talk to you a little bit about uh, course funding and careers. So UCL, for those of you who don't know, is uh, one of the best universities in the world. We are consistently ranked over the last uh, decade or two uh, amongst the top 10 universities in the world, amongst the rankings that, uh, that matter. And we are very much a research intensive university. And as you can see, we are recognized for what is known as research power, second in the UK. Our department, uh, Security and Crime Science, is part of the engineering faculty, engineering sciences. And there are 10, depart uh, 10 departments in the Faculty of Engineering Sciences. And as I've said, we are one of those. Now, what exactly is crime science? So crime science is a slightly different way of approaching uh, security and crime uh, in a what we would like to consider a very scientific way. So criminology approaches uh, the reduction of crime through uh, societal factors, looking at behavior, et cetera. And all of that's great stuff. But what we try and do is look at uh, how we can bring different dif disciplines together and bring the social and physical sciences uh, together to look at these uh, preventing and reducing uh, crime problems. And we are also distinguished by the fact that we work very, very closely with policymakers, uh, police agencies, law enforcement, because a large part of the research that we do has very real world impact and that research feeds into the courses that you're going to hear about today and i guess if nothing else you take away from today take that away that in comparison to many many other courses on crime and security our ones are recognized by law enforcement industry and practitioners from around the world as courses that help to train people whose work will make a real world impact and uh it just covered that teaching program. So these are the various programs that uh, that we have um, in the department. And there's no point me spending any time talking about this because my colleagues will talk about this. Uh, you can ignore the bachelors uh, because we're talking only about the postgraduate programs today. And that, I think, is enough from me. We'll talk about careers at the end. So now next up is... Uh, which of my colleagues is going next? I think we said Sandy. Was it yourself? Or was it you, Kevin? I think it was me. Okay, so Dr. Kevin Chetty is going to talk to you about the MSc in crime science and the various uh, avenues that you can uh, take to take that particular master's program. Thank you very much, Bas. Okay, I'll just um, share my screen. Okay. Can I just get confirmation that you can see my screen? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone, and um, you're welcome to the uh, the open evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Kevin Chetty, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Security and Crime Science. Uh, as you can see from this first slide, I've got quite a few programs to get through. Um, four MSc courses and a diploma and a certificate. Um, so I'm going to kind of try and cover everything um, in enough detail to give you a flavour of the course, but given the time constraints, um, yeah, I won't spend too long on any kind of particular aspect. Uh, the best way I thought I'd do this was to initially focus on the MSc in Crime Science, which is our original course and probably most straightforward in terms of the optional modules and the choices um, you have to make. Uh, and once I've been through that and kind of um, used that as a baseline, I'll then cover our three specialized routes, which is the MSc Crime Science with Data Science, 
MSC Crime Science Review of Cybercrime and MSC Crime Science of Serious and Organized Crime. Um, the diploma and certificate are just really scaled back versions of the MSC in Crime Science. So I just kind of mentioned how how that differs from MSC Crime Science again and, and how it's um, kind of scaled back in a sense. Okay, so uh, why is this course right for you? Um, so what I've got here is a selection of the learning outcomes that span all four MSC programs. And I won't go through each of them individually, but I've kind of picked out some, some key words, which I think will be quite useful in giving you an insight into um, what you expect to kind of gain from um, attending or, or becoming part of the MSC um, courses. The first is scientific thinking. So much of um, the programmes are focused around the scientific methodology and you know based around core scientific principles. So um, you really have lots of exposure to um, science and science-based approaches. Um, you can see here I've underlined words like theories, um, theoretical and applied. And I think what's important about this course is that you get to kind of cover both sides of the coin. Um, we're very much um, about real world impact and you know, um, understanding preventing, uh, understanding crime and preventing crime and, you know, and being able to kind of have you know, that direct influence in the real world. But it's also important that we understand why these techniques work and um, you know, the underlying theories that we can pull them off. So um, again, you can see kind of both sides um, of that of the coin. Uh, another key and important aspect of crime science is that it's multidisciplinary. And you'll see in the course that we draw upon a range of different disciplines um, that range from things like mathematics, computer science, um, chemistry, right through to sociology, psychology, geography, architecture, and the list goes on. Um, and um, every year we see lots and lots of students coming from different backgrounds um, onto the MSc course. And it really kind of lends itself when all these different skill sets and ways of thinking are brought together to look at problems in crime and security. Um, some other key points is um, the word critical. So uh, critical analysis really drives what we do um, and what works. So we're very outcome driven. We want to be able to clearly identify problems and then find solutions um, to be able to address those problems. OK, so um, I'll jump straight into the kind of the core structure. Um, and this is the MSc um, Crime Science Programme. And for the, um, for the Masters, you need 180 credits um, to complete, complete the course and kind of be awarded the Masters. And the way this is structured is that there are four core modules, which are shown here. So um, well, I'll jump back a bit. To get those 180 credits, you need to complete eight modules and a dissertation. So of those eight modules, we have four core modules, um, foundations of security and crime science, designing and doing research, preventing crimes, and quantitative methods. And I'll cover these in a bit more detail in the next slide. Um, so alongside the four core modules that you have to take, you also get to choose from a quite a large pool of options. Uh, and these co cover quite a few different areas of crime science. Um, and again, I'll, I'll cover these briefly in the upcoming slides. Um, and then adi in addition to um, those eight modules, um, which provide 120 credits in total, you then do you get your final 60 credits from a dissertation, um, which is a kind of um, which is a research project in the top topic of your choice. Um, so these are the four core modules um, in the MSc Crime Science course. And um, what I've done is just kind of put a short image or a small image of each one and um, a very short sentence outlining what the module is all about. Um, so for foundations of security and crime science, it, it effectively prepares you for the fundamentals needed to navigate through the program. Um, and the kind of blurb is it sets out the foundational concepts, theories and approaches to crime science. And what you'll find is that this is quite a large lecture because no matter what program you're on, and whether it's crime science or any of the specialized routes, everyone does this. So this is quite a large lecture. Um, we also have preventing crimes and where um, foundations provides you know, the fundamentals of crime science, um, preventing crime really focuses, and focuses on the application of crime science in the real world. Um, so to summarise, it examines the process of crime prevention and gives an exa examples of prevention in practice. 
Uh, the third core module is des designing and doing research. And this is really all about preparing students for, um, to kind of encounter and carry out their dissertation work. And while you formalize your dissertation topic later on in the course, many students find that it's um, really useful and beneficial to start thinking about preparing for their dissertation um, early on in the course. Um, and finally, statistical and research methods are utilized throughout the program. Um, so it's important that you know, you're equipped with the necessary statistical skills and, and research design skills um, to be able to, you know, to, to navigate through and, uh, and you know, especially part of the kind of quantitative aspects of the course, be able to deal with them. So quantitative methods um, really focus on research design and statistical analysis, data analysis techniques, et cetera. Et cetera. Okay, so I'll quickly run through the um, pool of optional modules. Um, unlike the core modules, I won't spend as long kind of going to the level of depth I went into, but just to kind of give you some a flavor and oversight of some of the types of courses which you can choose from. So we've got intelligence gathering and analysis, crime mapping and spatial analysis, investigation and detection, and perspectives and organized crimes, uh, organized crime, which is kind of four. Um, four options. We also have our two cyber focused modules, um, which look at cyber criminal operations and how to tackle them and the actual kind of cyber systems themselves. Um, crime modeling and uh, simulation and applied data science are kind of the more technical type of um, modules, which are more quantitative in nature. Um, then we have, uh, you know, quite a few modules which are geared towards um, analytics and future planning um, and things like policy, et cetera. So this is a horizon scanning and risk and contingency planning. Um, we have a more advanced statistical kind of quantitative methods course, which is called understanding multi multivariate modeling and causal interference. So for students wanting to take their kind of statistical analysis um, into greater depth to a next level, this is um, a, a course which is quite tailored tailored for you. Um, and then we have um, some newer modules, which were developed quite recently due to the rise in things like human trafficking and online online extreme extremism. Um, and what I like about these modules is that they align really nicely with some of the research which is being carried out in the, in the department by a number of academics. So, um, you know, by choosing these or you know a selection of these modules, you'll really get to see what's going on at the kind of cutting edge um, of these of these topic areas. Um, so what we have here is a timeline of you know how the courses are structured over the over the year, and um, what you can see. So what we have is term one, term two, and term three. Um, the modules in black text are the for the compuls compulsory modules. And the modules in the gray text are the optional modules. Um, again, you can see you have quite a big pool of them. What you can see here is that most of the um, compulsory modules are taken in the first term. So um, foundations of security and crime science, designing and doing research and quantitative methods are all in term one. Um, and then preventing crimes is in term two. So you'll, you'll complete most of your core modules in the first term. And then in the second term, you know, you'll start kind of um, splitting up into your um, optional module choices. Um, if you choose perspective on organized crime, which is in term one, you'll see you'll have a four four split. Um, whereas if you, choo if you choose not to do perspectives in organized crime, you'll do your three modules in term one and five modules in term two. Um, some students prefer this because um, because of quantitative methods in the first term. Sometimes it's it's better to have three in that term where you can focus more on that kind of statistical and, and research methods focused um, module. Um, one of the great things about the MSc in crime science is the flexibility offers um, with four optional module choices. When I go through the some of the other MSc programs, you'll see that it's kind of six core modules and two options. Um, so what this course offers is the ability to really tailor your program based on your interest or your planned career paths. Um, so, for example, if you're very much into things like data science, numerical analysis, you can choose options such as applied data science, agent-based modeling and simulation for research, which are all very kind of 
quantitative and analytical in nature. If you're interested in organized crime and you know, the methodologies used to understand and disrupt criminal networks, you can choose modules like investigation and detection, human trafficking, smuggling and exploit exploitation, which again are focused towards that topic area. So again, allowing you to tailor your masters um, along that type of route. And again, similarly for cybercrime, you know, if you're interested in cybercrime and cybersecurity, we have those two modules um, to um, to allow you to, to focus um, in those areas. Okay, so that was the MSc in crime science. Um, and hopefully you know, that, you know, it defines, it, it's a baseline of what the, of that course entails. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll go through the specialized routes um, and really highlight the, the key differences between those in MSc crime science, just so you get an idea of what's involved in these um, specialized routes, um, the programs for them. Okay, so for MSc in crime science with data science, unlike um, the previous where we, ha we had to have four core modules, um, this program, um, you have to complete six core modules. Um, the first three, Foundations of Security and Crime Science, Designing and Doing Research and Preventing Crimes, are similar to um, the Crime Science program. However, unlike, um, in, in this case, you do not take quantitative methods, but you take the more advanced quantitative methods course, which is understanding multivariate modeling and causal interference. Um, there are also two other core modules, which is um, crime modeling and simulation and applied data science, which are again, all focused um, um, to define a pathway in data science. You then got uh, your set of optional modules. And in this case, you now take two optional modules because you've taken six as your core. Um, and one of the benefits of this program is that it offers you optional modules um, in data science in other departments. So in this case, um, there is a course machine learning for data science, which you can see at the bottom here, um, which is offered in another UCL department. So again, you can um, go to other apartment departments where they specialized in some of these areas and kind of get more insight and knowledge into that topic area. Uh, and then finally, you've got your dissertation. Um, so the MSc in cybercrime, again, is another route which specializes, where you specialize in that particular area. Again, we have six core modules. Um, the first three is similar to MSc crime science. But in this case, um, for the, your quantitative or your methods module, um, you actually have a choice between um, understanding multivariate modeling and causal interference or quantitative methods. So you can kind of choose, depending on your level of kind of statistical knowledge, what's best suited for you. Um, and then the final two core modules are those which focus um, in cybercrime, again, allowing you that more specialized pathway. Um, you have the two optional modules, quite similar to the MSc Crime Science uh, with Data Science, um, but in this case, you've you've got your two optional you've got two optional modules here in offered in other departments. In this case, um, Information Security Management and Emerging Dilemmas Dilemmas in Digital Technology and Policy, um, and then the dissertation. Um, finally, we have our newly launched MSc Crime Science with Serious and Organized Crime. Um, so this is the first year that we're running uh, this um, specialized route. Um, like the other specialized routes, there are six core modules. Uh, it's a bit more complex here. So the first three core modules are similar to um, what I mentioned previously. Um, in this case, you have a choice between preventing crimes or preventing prevention and disruption. For the methods modules, um, you actually have a choice of three. Um, you can take quantitative methods, understanding multivariate modeling and causal interference or qualitative methods. However, you're by default you're autom automatically allocated to quantitative methods, which is kind of the core, the main um, methods module. If you decide you'd like to do um, qualitative methods or understanding multivariate modeling and causal inter interference, we run a short test um, at the start of term, where you have to demonstrate that you have the required level of statistical liter literacy um, to be able to then move out of quantitative methods. And then finally, um, for your sixth core module, we have human trafficking, smuggling and exploitation, which again allows you, it helps to define that pathway on serious and organized crime. Um, then you have two optional modules, um, 
one of which you can see the final one is a new module which we're launching called economic crime past present and future as well as the pool of other modules which we offer um kind of across across the programs and then again finally the dissertation um there are a number of kind of study options um for the crime science routes um, the, the main crime science program and its roots. Um, and also the diploma in security crime science and certificate in security and security crime science. Um, just to mention that the diploma is actually, um, yeah, so the diploma is basically MSc crime science, but without the dissertation. So it's just eight modules. Whereas the certificate is really a scaled back version of MSc in crime science. It's just four modules. Um, and no um, no dissertation also. Um, some students in the past have started off with um, the certificate and diploma and they've liked the course enough that they've then extended it to the MSc, which is also possible. Um, as a student, you can take the course um, on a full-time kind of basis, which is over 12 months, or part-time mod flex basis, which is between two and five years, depending how you'd like to structure it. With, there are also distance learning options um, for the various courses, um, which means yeah, these are particularly tailored for um, people who are um, maybe working and they need to balance um, you know, their jobs uh, with distance learning or, or they're located kind of somewhere else. Um, and all courses are, are modular. So like I said, it's possible to register for, for a certificate um, and then kind of move up to the, the diploma and then to the master's. There are a number of career destinations which our previous students have, um, apologies, which have uh, moved to. Um, many of our students have kind of stayed in the crime and security um, sectors from, you know, kind of UK police forces, UK police forces, and they've gone to work at the Home Office, GCHQ, National Crime Agency. So like I said, many of our students have kind of moved into career pathways that are similar to what they've studied. Um, some other students have decided they kind of like studying in academia, so they've um, gone the academic route and, and undertaken PhDs. Um, some have also who have become um, kind of moved into universities as lecturers. Some are, are actually in our departments now as lecturers who had taken um, have taken some of these courses. Um, the courses also offer a set of transferable skills. So we have had students in the past who have moved to kind of financial organisations and consultancies in business and kind of a range of other um, you know, career pathways because of those set of trans transferable skills. Finally, what are we looking for? So um, to be accepted on the course, you need a minimum of 2-2 in a relevant undergraduate degree. And I mentioned that crime science is very multidisciplinary. So we're quite open to students with a range of backgrounds from psychology, criminology, sociology, and economics, and some of those kind of social sciences, right through to the, you know, the STEM and engineering sciences that include maths, physics, biochemistry, etc. If you don't have um, a tutor degree, to, to in a relevant deg uh, undergraduate degree, um, you can be accepted on, onto the course with five years of relevant work experience, which you have to kind of outline in your application. Um, and just a tip for when you do apply, um, really use the personal statement to convey your interest in the subject area and why you want to kind of pursue a master's course. Um, and especially you know, your willingness to take on, you know, I mentioned the kind of quantitative and statistical elements which are embedded into the course and your willingness to kind of undertake these and, um, you know, and, and to use as tools as you kind of navigate and work through the programme. Okay, so that's it for me. Um, thanks for your attention. And I'll pass on now to the um, next person I think is Sandy. Okay. Um, getting a message that says the host has stopped my video. Uh, but, uh, I'll just uh, I'll just say a couple of things. So uh, for those of you who have questions, it's, we've already put it into the chat, but do save your questions to the end for each of the courses and we will cover them all in the Q&A session at the end. So next up is uh, my colleague, Dr. Sandy Schumann, who will be talking to you about the MSc Encountering extreme, Extremist Crime and Terrorism. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vas. And yeah, welcome everyone. Good evening. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce this program to you and to share with you why this course, the MSc Encountering Extremist Crime and Terrorism is so unique. 
So about two years ago, we completely redesigned this program, which is now the MSC Encountering Extremist Crime and Terrorism, or short CECT. And we did this to respond to the changing nature of terrorism. So terrorism has evolved into what we can call a hybrid threat. And it overlaps with extremism, with hate crime, with disinformation, influence campaigns, and conspiracy beliefs. And we have changed the module offering and also module content in order to equip our students with the skills and the expertise to address these new challenges. So this makes this course really timely and um, very unique compared to some of the competitors that are uh, available at other universities. As my colleagues had already mentioned, all of the teaching at our department focuses on enabling our students to apply theories and applied con and uh, abstract concepts to really tackle real world problems. We recognize that most of you uh, may not end up in academia. And it is important that you do not just leave this degree with a list of theories, but that you know how you can translate that theoretical knowledge into crime prevention measures or measures to counter terrorism. So application is really at the core of our teaching philosophy. And in fact, many, if not most of your professors or lecturers work in close collaboration with law enforcement, practitioners and policymakers. And they bring those experiences from practice into the classroom. As Vaz has already mentioned, um, being a student at UCL means that your education is grounded in world leading research. So UCL is one of the top research universities globally. And our students are often the first to hear about the latest research insights and innovation. And this is not only um, sort of happening in the process of your taught modules, but for all of those of you who are interested in completing the Masters of Science, so not the postgraduate diploma, you will complete a dissertation as uh, Kevin has uh, just outlined as well. And in that dissertation, all of our students are conducting a original empirical study. And um, in those uh, projects, you are being supervised, by, of course, one of our professors or lecturers who are pushing the frontiers in their respective fields. Some examples of uh, research projects that students on the Masters of uh, Countering Extremist Crime and Terrorism have completed included, for instance, a analysis of a large scale representative survey to identify risk factors for misogynist extremist violence or an experimental study where students try to understand why people engage with extremist and terrorist content online. So all of the projects that our students uh, complete are usually extremely original, contribute to the literature. And it is also not rare that uh, our students go on to publish their dissertations uh, with the support of their supervisors, of course. Um, speaking a little bit more about the practicalities of the degree. So here I will somewhat also repeat what uh, Kevin mentioned because uh, many of these aspects apply, of course, across different degrees at the department. So first of all, you can study the CECT program, that is the master's or the postgraduate diploma, either as a campus-based student or as a distance learning student. So that means you study online wherever you want. And um, you can do so either full-time or on the more flexible program. And um, for this coming cohort, we are offering a module flexible. Um, so you can take between two to five years. And uh, from 2025, 2026 intake, we will also offer a part-time option, uh, which would be completed in two years. So those of you, you are who are here and are looking to apply perhaps next year, there will then actually be three um, yeah, options 
full-time, part-time, and module flexible. As flexible as the program delivery is also the curriculum of the CECT program. So it's quite customizable and again, similar actually to the MSc in crime science. All students um, take a core set of four modules, Perspectives on Extremism and Terrorism, Foundations of Security and Crime Science, Designing and Doing Research, and Quantitative Methods. And uh, Kevin already introduced three of those to you. So those are three modules that actually um, a lot of students at the department take together. If you are doing the MSc, you are then also doing the dissertation module for the postgraduate diploma. That is not uh, required. And um, yeah, perspectives on extremism and terrorism is basically a module which introduces you to the latest trends in extremism and terrorism, different manifestations, ideologies, risk factors, and so on. And um, you then get to complement those core modules with four optional modules. And um, if you wanna take a very narrow focus on countering extremist crime and terrorism, you can take the four modules, the optional modules that are mentioned here. Two of those were designed explicitly for CECT. So that's online extremism and hate crime and assessing extremism risk. And those two, mo two modules, in fact, do not exist at any other universities. These are extremely unique and very timely and uh, really equip you with quite unique skills. Um, prevention and disruption um, would be another well-suited module here, optional module to take, which looks more at countermeasures, uh, counterterrorism measures, et cetera. And then terrorism, this is a module that's actually offered by the Department of Political Science, and it provides a complementary uh, perspective on the phenomenon of terrorism, taking a slightly different angle than crime science. If you wanted to branch out though, if you did not want to take such a very narrow focus on um, extremist crime and terrorism, you are also able to pick four optional modules from, um, I would say, almost a full catalog of modules that are available at the department. Here, these are just some examples that are listed on here. And um, you can pick those optional modules, for instance, to advance um, certain analytical or research method skills to maybe dip into cybercrime and cybersecurity and so on. So you're really able to craft a quite unique learning experience in line with your um, needs and interests. Similarly to what Kevin mentioned, um, the majority of the core modules would be taken in term one. Uh, perspectives on extremism and terrorism is taught in ter term two, as are most of these optional modules that are mentioned here. So most of the students on the CECT are taking a sort of, yeah, three modules in term one, five in term two diet, and then the dissertation uh, follows that. Now, as diverse as these uh, learning pathways are, as diverse are also the careers on which our graduates have embarked. So um, our students work in government, uh, civil service, industry, technology companies, and um, the letter will, I think, especially in the UK, become a very interesting uh, profession for our graduates uh, should the new online safety bill be soon <laughs> actually passed, uh, tech companies will have much more work to do um, in terms of risk assessment and so on. And um, certainly uh, taking a degree like the CECT would be a really suitable preparation for these kind of um, roles. Um, yes, of course, some of our graduates are also moving into academia, doing PhDs or working um, NGOs and the charity sector. Last but not least, I do want to say a few words about the eligibility criteria. Um, so yes, we are uh, inviting anyone with a undergraduate degree equivalent to a lower second class or above, um, 
be it from a UK university or overseas. And um, there are a number of relevant disciplines that we consider, um, criminology, sociology, psychology, international relations, political science, geography. The list is actually fairly long. Um, but if you do not have a first degree, however, you have five years or more of relevant professional experience, we very much invite you to apply as well. And uh, in fact, every week, every year we have um, quite a good number of practitioners in our cohort and um, us as teaching staff, but also fellow students really benefit from uh, their experiences. So I want to really send in a special invitation out to um, everyone here on the call who might not have a first degree, but relevant experience. What do we consider as relevant experience? Well, this could be anything from uh, law enforcement, armed forces, uh, risk analyst. Um, the list is actually, yeah, <laughs> probably more diverse than you can imagine. If you are in doubt, if you're not sure if your experience is considered relevant, please do get in touch. The email address is on the next slide. And then we can, you know, clarify that on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and just a final word also on the personal statement. We do pay very close attention to them. So please take some time uh, writing your personal statements and explain to us why you want to study this degree, uh, what you hope to gain from it, and especially if you do not have a first degree in a relevant discipline, share with us why you think that your experience so far will help you succeed in this program. But once again, also there, if in doubt, get in touch. And um, yeah, with this, I come to an end. Thank you for your attention. And I look forward to your questions about this program. Uh, thanks, Sandy. And on the subject of questions, once again, just a reminder, Put your questions into the Q&A, whether they're general questions or specific to any of the programs, and we will all answer them all in one go at the end. Um, we're going to move swiftly on now to the MSc in Crime and Forensic Science, and the course leader here is Dr. James French. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you can see my screen and you can hear my voice. Um, I'm Dr. James French, and I'm the program convener for the MSc in Crime and Forensic Science, as Vaz has just explained. Um, I want to start this short presentation um, with a little quote from the National Academy of Sciences report. Uh, this was written um, in 2009. The report was concerned with looking at the discipline of forensic science as a whole, um, commenting on the state of it, the accuracy and validity of the methods that it used. And it was a pretty damning report. Uh, and one quote stands out um, as being particularly critical of the discipline, which is the simple reality is that the interpretation of forensic evidence is not always based on scientific studies to determine its validity. And this is a serious problem. Um, this, this kind of quote is at the heart of our research and and teaching here at UCL in the forensic sciences um, is very much our mission statement in research and teaching. This is what we're trying to rectify in forensic science. Um, we like to think that we do this in a distinctly interdisciplinary way. Um, our centre brings together researchers um, from across UCL, and this is reflected in the teaching and the research we do and the modules that you can take if you take the course. Um, our academics and our students come from a wide range of scientific backgrounds. So one thing I want to flag um, straight away is that this is not a traditional forensic science degree. Um, it's the MSc in Crime and Forensic science and it's a unique program both nationally and internationally. It's the only forensic science program offered by a ten top, top 10 university. It's the only program in the UK that seeks to produce a next generation of forensic science decision makers in contrast to laboratory scientists. It's the only program that offers research-led teaching that addresses interpretation of evidence and the presentation of forensic evidence. There's a big emphasis on understanding what science is, what crime is, and how forensic science should rightly fit into that framework. We take a holistic view of, of forensic science. 
So traditionally, um, there's been lots of focus in research and teaching um, in forensic science on processes at the crime scene um, and in the laboratory, looking at labor laboratory techniques, analytical techniques. But we focus on the entire forensic science progress process. So we recognize that forensic science is not only multidisciplinary, but it also is a process that spans um, from the crime scene right through to the courtroom. And we study each of these elements during the program. So the MSE is about thinking about forensic science from crime scene to court. We focus on understanding evidence and interpreting evidence rather than just on laboratory techniques. Um, interpretation is a primary concern for the UK forensic science regulator, and that's why we reflect it in the programme. There can be some experimental work. Um, many of our students do experiments for their dissertations, and you will learn about some techniques, but this is uh, not a training course to train you to be a proficient laboratory technician. Um, rather, it trains you to understand concepts and theories that underpin forensic evidence um, and forensic science as an academic discipline. It will equip you with research skills. It will inform your critical thinking so that you can be um, an intelligent consumer of forensic science and evidence more generally. And even more than that, it will equip you with the skills for conducting good science, whether it's forensic science or, or beyond. Our programme is recognised by a wide range of employers um, to produce excellent graduates who are top flight performers in, their, in a range of fields. We've had many students um, recently go on to the uh, Met Police's direct um, entry detective scheme, for example. So onto the course content, um, there are some core modules which everyone takes, and it's common to uh, a number of the programs that you've heard about this evening. Some are shared with other MSc programs. Um, understanding and interpreting forensic evidence, which is a module I lead, and law and expert evidence are bespoke for this program. Um, and I'll speak a bit more about the research project later on. Um, you have a range of optional modules uh, to choose from, both from within the department and from outside. Some have um, prerequisites. They, they require you to have some, some existing knowledge and experience. Um, um, and some of them are subject to change, but there's a, there's a wide range here to suit a variety of interests and add specific flavors to the degree. But rather than go through these one by one, um, we're short on time and you can check these uh, module descriptions out on the website. I wanted to highlight four things that are going on this week um, on the programme to kind of give you a flavour of what's going on now. And if you were here next year, the sorts of things you will be doing. So I'm going to try to highlight some of the exciting things um, in the next few minutes. Um, and you can read a little bit more about the course, course content by the website if you need to. So we have in term two, we have our practices of crime scene investigation and expert testimony uh, module running at the moment, or in short, it's our CSI module. Um, it's, it's very popular um, with students on the programme. Students learn the skills that are needed to examine a crime scene. They collect and recover and secure and package evidence. And they'll be leading up to an end of term assessment uh, where they'll be entering a mock scene searching it, collecting the evidence and documenting their collection. They'll also be packaging their evidence. Um, they'll then be presenting that evidence in a, um, a mock courtroom and they'll be cross-examined by a team of um, uh, barristers who are played by the academic staff. Um, and we, we kind of go over the evidence and uh, the, the students de defend their decisions that they made during the, um, during the examination. They're also given some training uh, around um, e expert witness conduct as well. Um, tomorrow we have, um, uh, I'm, I'm lecturing on my module, which is understanding and interpreting forensic evidence. And we have a workshop in that module tomorrow on cell site evidence. So understanding um, the extent to which we can use data from mobile network operators, so Vodafone, O2 and so on, um, to locate um, mobile phone activity, so uh, calls, text, data sessions in time and space for forensic purposes and for investigations. And we're teaming up with a, um, a company called Forensic Analytics who come in to help deliver that workshop. Um, they're experts in the field and provide a lot of training to a range of police forces up and down the country. So we're doing that tomorrow. Um, a number of students are thinking about their, they should be thinking about their research projects at the moment that they will be doing over the summer. I'm having meetings this week with students who have uh, ideas for uh, research projects in, um, in forensic science. 
And the, the research project is a highlight, I think, of the degree for most of our graduates. It's a four month project uh, supervised by an expert in the field. So it's one of the forensic science team within the department. And there's a possibility of working with certain partners. I've put some um, previous partners up on the, on the slide there. Um, and we have a huge range of projects. We've had experiments on blood, uh, uh, experiments using uh, collection of fibers, finger mark persistence, and the accuracy of those cool data records for mobile phone forensics that I, that I mentioned recently. Um, uh, we've had projects looking at um, the psychology of decision making at the crime scene and in the courtroom, jury decision making, and looking at the extent to which cognitive bias uh, might get in the way of good decisions in forensic science. So a really wide range of uh, project ideas and methodologies that have been used. Um, Finally, we uh, run a research seminar series that, that is specifically for the MSc in Crime and Forensic Science. It's, it's a program of seminars that runs alongside the TORP program. And um, so every Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. during term time, we welcome a speaker from, um, from industry, um, from academia. So we've had talks from people from uh, DSTL, other government organisations, um, principal forensic services, various police forces, uh, both from the UK and beyond, um, researchers from other universities such as Oxford, uh, Edinburgh, Queen Mary, Teesside. Um, and it's designed to complement and go beyond the course, great for networking for our students and engaging with academic um, partners and practitioners uh, in the field. A lot of dissertation ideas come out of those discussions um, and some students go on to pursue um, careers in based on the connections that they've that they've generated during those seminars and um, we also welcome back some of our graduates who have gone on to to really exciting things after the degree um, and invite them back to talk about their experiences uh, Thursday's seminar speaker is a crime scene investigator who works on really complex crime scenes across the world including fire investigation so he's coming to talk about some of his experiences uh, to our current students so now you know um, what we do, a little bit about what we do and who we are. Um, this is who we're looking for. So you need to have a bachelor's degree in a scientific discipline equivalent to a UK 2-1. Um, now, I've hinted at this already. We, um, we interpret the word scientific very broadly here. Um, I'm a geographer by background. I would consider myself a scientist on some days. Um, to give you a flavour, we have um, biologists, forensic scientists, lawyers, psychologists, computer scientists, and a chemist on our, our MSc program at the moment. Um, as other speakers have, have mentioned, we place a great emphasis on the personal statement. So I'm very interested when looking at applications to understand how you think your experience uh, and in your background fits with the aims of the program and that's what we're looking for alternatively um, you can demonstrate five years or more relevant professional experience um, we've had for example um, senior police officers from uh, a variety of different um, countries come and take this this program so that, that's a possibility as well so i think i'm just about out of time um, you can keep in touch with us, keep up to date with um, with what we're doing. Um, I'll be around for the quick Q&A at the end. So if you want to put anything in the chat or ask a question live, you're, you're very welcome to at the end. OK, thank you. Thanks, James. Um, OK, so we're just going to move right to the last uh, last presentation. And this is by Professor Jyoti Balua. And this is for the MSc in policing. Thanks, Baz. Um... Can, can you see my screen? Can someone respond, please? Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, <clears throat> thank you all for coming. Um, I know you've been very patient, so I will go through quickly my slides. This is the MSc in policing or a PG diploma in policing. Why policing? Um, it's a career path pathway. So doing this master's uh, will help people who want to join the police or, or, or are thinking about a career in the police um, and related law enforcement organizations. Uh, we're hoping and we are preparing our students to take up leadership roles in these organizations. We also have students, uh, we are 
readying them to uh, join the security industry in consultancy roles. Um, it uh, gives you research and analysis skills, whether you want to use them whilst you're in the police or in allied industries. Uh, the course um, gives you, um, equips you with critical thinking skills and evidence-based practice. So what makes this course stand out from all other policing courses um, in the UK is the emphasis we place on an evidence-based approach to policing. So in line with the, um, with the philosophy of the department, we believe in um, developing and propagating an evidence-based and a scientific approach to policing. And these are transferable skills. As my colleagues before me have said, there are a number of destinations that our students who have done this master's have gone on to um, take up jobs in. So there are a number of transferable skills that you're going to develop as part of this course. So what are the program aims? Um, the aim of the program, honestly, is to integrate the latest research on policing with police education. So we don't uh, believe in police training as much as police education. Um, we are um, hoping to create thinking law enforcement officers or people who are interested in the policing career. Um, as my colleagues said, we have the um, Center for Global Cities Policing, where we uh, housed in the department. We have uh, connections with police forces and police professionals across the world from Australia, New Zealand, the Middle East, um, to um, Latin America and the US, including a number of police forces in Europe. So we work together and, and a lot of our research projects are international. We have an interdisciplinary approach to solving complex problems. As you will see that the way the program is designed, you can pick modules that will help you improve your decision-making and problem-solving um, skills. We are um, hoping that uh, we contribute to the development of an evidence-based profession. So a number of dissertations uh, that you, uh, if you are on this course that you would be doing would be actual empirical projects that will contribute to the evidence base. So you are going to be um, part of that entire movement of um, making policing an evidence-based profession. Um, and our, our aim is to address a number of global challenges. So this is a police, uh, this is a master's program that is um, not focused merely on the Anglo-Saxon model of policing, but is very, very inclusive um, um, to, to, and welcomes police officers and students, in fact, from across the world to understand how um, all these um, skills that you're developing can be applied back in your own context. Um, and we are hoping to enable current and future leaders, not just in the police uh, organization, but in a number of other allied um, organizations. The program structure um, is, is simply, you've got eight taught modules um, and the dissertation. So the eight taught modules, we'll go through the, the, the compulsory and the optional modules in a minute, but each of those modules um, can uh, carry 15 credits and the dissertation carries 60 credits. So it's, it's a big piece of the master's program. You have an option of uh, attending on campus, so in-person uh, classes, or you could do this master's via distance learning. You could also do this master's full-time uh, within one year or in a flexible modular um, fashion over a period of five years. So we understand that a number of our students are actually practitioners, our police officers are, in, uh, are holding full-time jobs. So we allow for this, um, uh, the, the master's program to be completed over a period of five years. The program design. So um, this, this MSc has five modules that are compulsory. Um, as with all in common with all other um, 
master's programs in the department foundations of crime science is an compulsory module um, along with doing research in social sciences. So these are two modules that you will be sharing with other students in the department. However, we have four other bespoke modules, three of which are um, compulsory and they are bespoke for this master's. The first is uh, police and the public, where we are looking at police public relationships um, at, at different levels um, and the kind of public pub, police public connections that can be made with specific uh, targeted communities, vulnerable communities and, and in, in different circumstances. We then look at uh, models of policing for crime reduction. So we are looking at different models of policing that can be um, and what's the evidence for which of them work in what circumstances and what's required. What kinds of crimes do these models of policing um, uh, are suited for? And finally, uh, one of the biggest issues facing policing are a number of scandals that are facing uh, a lot of police forces, especially in the Western uh, world. And uh, so a whole module on ethical policing, which looks at ethical dilemmas that are inherent in policing and how to and, and equip students to be able to take decisions in an ethical and legal manner. The, um, the research project again is, is, is unique to our department where we encourage students to do empirical research projects. So a number of our current students and past students are doing projects that are relevant to their police forces or their country and their situation. And we've had um, uh, sort of police uh, dissertations that have then uh, officers have gone back or students have gone back and presented it to the police leaders in their countries and they have also influenced policy back home. So these are really an opportunity to do something quite real and quite contributory to the evidence-based um, movement. The optional modules, again, uh, or uh, many of the modules that are um, that are uh, delivered in the department are open to the uh, students in MSc uh, in policing. So, if you are interested in cybercrime, then there are a couple of modules on cybercrime and cybersecurity um, uh, research methods. If you want to focus on organized crime, there are a number of modules in that area. Uh, extremism and terrorism includes online um, online extremism and hatred, intelligence analysis, criminal investigation, and there's a bespoke module on police leadership, which we deliver sort of in a compact form over a period of a week in February, uh, in March. So it, it's five days and we deliver this module in conjunction with the School of Management. Uh, again, one of the leading schools of management in the world housed at UCL. So again, it's a very unique program to that extent. Who are we looking for? We're looking for, um, in the first instance, serving police officers or law enforcement officers, police staff, but not just practitioners. We are looking to uh, um, attract motivated students and increasingly, officers themselves have found that when they are in a classroom talking about some ethically, morally difficult issues, um, having a student perspective, uh, a thinking critical student perspective is really useful. On the other hand, students find it really, really valuable to be, uh, to be sort of part of sharing experience and learning in the classroom that practitioners are able to do um, in, in, in these classrooms. So it, it's a really good mix and, and, and both kinds of students sort of benefit from that. We are looking for a um, uh, undergraduate degree um, uh, with a 2-2 level uh, achievement in a relevant subject and that can be a wide range of subjects um, and or five years of relevant professional experience. Again, you have to show how, how your experience, if you don't have an undergraduate degree is relevant to your wanting to do this course. Um, um, students have been asking in, on the Q&A, what uh, tips do you have for um, writing a personal statement? I mean, you have to 
if you have a relevant uh, degree in a relevant subject or you're a serving police officer, it's, it's quite easy for you to demonstrate your interest. But if you don't have a relevant um, degree and, and the, the experience of being a law enforcement officer, then simply saying i'm uh, you know i've watched a tv show and i was interested in policing does not really help you've got to demonstrate what is it about policing that's going to be useful for you what are you going to learn from it and take it on in your future career plan and progression so it's very important you uh, that you are able to tie up your existing skills and your future plans to the program and show us that you really know um what the program is offering and that it is meeting your needs. That's all I had to say. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, really happy to um, answer your questions. Um, and if there's anything else that you'd like to get. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jyoti. So before we go into questions, just a couple of more things for me to cover for which I will again share my screen. And hopefully you can see that. Okay, so let's zip through. It's easier to just go to. So careers. So obviously, as we've said, um, as all of my colleagues have said, our courses are very much designed to deal with real world crime and security issues. And so because of that, we find that our students um, don't have a lot of trouble finding careers, uh, but also we as faculty offer you a lot of advice and help to prepare you for once you've uh, once you've completed your your program uh, so we do have a dedicated careers team uh, we have and they will offer you not just advice on finding jobs and and further studies but also they will help you to decide on which of those avenues might be the best for you they'll help you to prepare with cvs and covering letters uh, and the rest of it and of course, they will help you in the event that you uh, have interviews. Lots more information on that uh, on, from that slide. So funding is, of course, a major issue for for many students who come onto these programs. They're not cheap, as you as you will already no doubt have discovered. Um, and it is a difficult funding uh, difficult funding environment at the moment. There's no point me telling you anything else. These are just some of the ways that you might begin to look for, for scholarships and, and, and bursaries, several different UCL-wide uh, master's programs, one specific to, to, to India. Now, at the bottom there, you see scholarships and bursaries offered by our department. Um, if you want to apply for those, a couple of things that you should be aware of. Uh, the deadline is 30th of April, and we expect you to have applied for the program as well. By that, uh, that, by that stage. Uh, but also, we say that we will offer you up to £10,000, but the reality is that to try and spread the money further, we tend to offer mainly uh, £2,500 bursaries so that we can make sure that more people are getting some help towards their course fees. And I guess the takeaway from that is that if you if you are relying entirely on a bursary from us to fund your master's program, that probably isn't going to happen. So it's important that even if you're applying for a bursary, you realize that it's probably only, only going to pay part of the fee. And therefore, you should also try to make other uh, arrangements for the rest of, of the money. OK, so find uh, you can find out more uh, from those uh, those links. Uh, but also to make you aware that if you want more information um, and if you would like to meet the course leaders in person and maybe hear from one or two uh, current students from the program, then we are also having another open evening, but it's going to be an in-person open evening in London at UCL on campus. So again, uh, yes, there'll be a lot of duplication, but if you do physically want to come and meet some of us and see what UCL is all about, then that's uh, that's a date for your diary. Ways to stay in touch, lots of social media um, for engineering and for our department as a whole. And you can easily find these on our website too. And lastly, while we answer your questions, if you have the time, uh, do help us out to, to try and make this uh, open evening uh, even more efficient next year by filling out this, this short form. Okay, so now let's move to questions. Okay, so let me just stop sharing my screen.
uh, and have a look at the Q&A. So we've got several questions in there. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll read out some of these questions and I will direct the ones that are relevant to my colleagues to them. Otherwise, I'll answer it myself. So the first one is, will we make the slides available after the session? Um, I think that's uh, Julia. Can you answer that one? We will be able to make these slides available to everyone. Is that right? So, hi, yeah. everyone. Yes, we can um, add these onto our website and then we will also add the video on our YouTube channel and we will make um, cuts of each of the programs for everyone to see. So if you want to rewatch some of the details and some of the program presentations, you can. OK, next one from Hannah James. How big are all the courses and average lecture sizes? So I guess that's a question about how many people are in the room and that varies across the various programs, of course, but uh, if I were to say ask Kevin in crime science, how many people range across, uh, how many yeah. do you expect? I would say it does vary, like you said, Vas. Um, for example, Foundations of Security and Crime Science, which is a core module across most of the programs, um, you'll probably find around there's a hundred students. So that's one of our bigger, you know, bigger um, modules. However, for some other kind of optional modules where, you know, it gets spread a bit more thinly, um, sometimes they could be 10 to 15 students per module, sometimes less. But on average, I would say around 30, 30 students per, mod per module. But again, it varies depending on the course and who those courses are open to. OK, brilliant. Um, so the next one uh, from Birta Rotterberg. Apologies if I mispronounce any of your names. Um, do you have more advice on writing a strong personal statement? So, Sandy, perhaps we could ask you to chip in with that one. Yes, sorry, I have all the little windows open. Um, I would say what we're really looking for is, as we kind of already emphasize, is be clear why you are interested in this degree and do not just copy paste what's on the website. We know that UCL is a great university. We know that London is a great city to study in. So you don't need to tell us that. Tell us why you are personally interested in this degree. And this can be drawing on your previous uh experience it could be professional experience work experience volunteer experience or also a first degree that you've done um did you maybe identify you know a certain gap that you wanted to fill um but it's the more personal the better um and also please tell us that you understand what the degree is about um i've literally just before this call looked at some applications and it is very clear whether students just copy paste personal statements that they send to a bunch of different universities or if they actually read the program description and um, tell us in their statement why our degree is interesting for them. So um, you heard all of us today highlight how these programs are unique, what modules are being offered, what we are looking for. So we want to make sure that you are a good fit for us, that we are a good fit for you. And we need to be able to see that in your personal statement. Um, concise is good, um, but make it specific and personal. I think this is the, the best advice uh, I can give. Thanks, Sandy. I mean, it is a very important question. So if any of the other course leaders have something specific to their course that they'd like to advise, advise uh, applicants on, please chip in now. Yeah, uh, can I just add, I think um, for things like data science and cybercrime, um, just because there is some of the modules are more quantitative in nature, especially for data science, I think just to make clear that, you know, you, that you expect to undertake um, and you know, these types of modules and that your background to kind of highlight how your backgrounds are suited to to being able to um, undertake those kind of more quantitative um, based courses. And just from me, um, when it comes to forensic science, um, as I said, we don't expect you to have done a forensic science degree before, um, but really demonstrate how your experience, how the things that you've done on your previous degree program, whatever that was, might apply to uh, the field of forensic science, how you might apply those those things that you've learned and those skills that you have to, to forensic science. And please do refer to the course. We, um, we like to hear about you and, and, and your skills, but we also want to hear about why you want to do this particular course and not 
another course um, we want to make sure that there's a good fit between you and the program and that's the really important thing and um, we want this to be the right course for you and i think I'd, I'd like to finally add that it's not just an issue of us seeing whether you're a fit for the course i think uh we are really interested in ensuring that the course is the right fit for you so we the last thing we want is students on a course uh, coming on our course and then finding that they that that wasn't really what they what they were either equipped to um do well in or or even interested in so so it it's really important that the personal statement is not a generic personal statement saying i'm interested in crime but it's very very specific to the to the particular because as we say our courses are unique so we want to we want to be able to be sure that you understand that and that you are the right fit for it, but also that we are the right fit for you. Okay, thank you. Right, next one. Um, anonymous, have any students on the MSc programs taken the our undergrad programs? I would guess that the answer to that is yes. Um, anyone have a quick confirmation on that? Are you seeing students feeding through from our bachelor's programs? Um. I've certainly seen some apply to crime and forensic science and I've we've offered places they haven't ultimately come onto the program. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, that's the best answer we can give you. We, we have bachelor's programs and we certainly expect um, people to come onto the master's programs if they wish to study further. What's the contact time per week? Another anonymous question. Um, Kevin? Um, so I think, assuming you have a four four split, so four modules in term one and four modules in term two. So, um, so I think every week you'd you know, you'd have um, four of those classes, and it's typically two hours um, per you know per session, um, and some with tutorials. So I would say approximately ten hours per week. Um, and that's just contact time in lectures, but obviously that doesn't include the kind of extra reading and um, tasks you're given outside, um, outside those kind of two to three hours contact time. Um, sometimes we do these things called flipped lectures, which require you to watch the lecture outside um, those kind of the allocated time slot, which then means you can use the time slot to kind of do more practical tasks or group work or things like that. So, um, so I would... Uh, estimate around 10 hours contact time per week but it, again it can vary depending on what modules you choose and if there are tutorials or workshops or computer labs um, associated with them okay um next one is for james can somebody with a law degree come on to your masters uh, yes absolutely we've had um i think we've currently got a lawyer on the on the program um, so absolutely. Um, you need to demonstrate your um, in the personal statement, your uh, aptitude for 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 some science as well uh, as your law background. So you need to demonstrate an interest in science and some um, skills because some of the modules will require you to 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 do some scientific thinking. Um, it would have been a little bit different to some of the stuff you would have done in a, a law degree. Um, you'll have to do some quantitative data analysis for example as well uh, but if you can demonstrate those skills you would be you would be a good fit um it always offers a nice perspective to have a lawyer on the program we've got a, a module on um law and expert evidence which basically looks at the role of expert evidence within the legal process and criminal justice system so uh, there'll be modules that would have been of particular interest to you as well great uh, next question is how competitive are optional modules for the MSc in crime science, Kevin? Some are competitive, um, but what we do is we anticipate, which you know, we know from past experience in history, what are you know popular modules. So we try to anticipate um, you know, room sizes and whatever whatever's needed to accommodate um those kind of um, more popular modules. So we we tend to be able to give everyone the optional modules they choose because we know we know what's in demand and we can prepare for that. So um, I wouldn't worry about 
you know, getting an early to your optional modules or um or not getting your optional modules because they're full because um we we plan for that. Okay, while you're there, I'm going to ask you a question that's a bit later because it's easier than flipping around. Um, is the MSc in Crime Science with a data science course open for BA criminology graduates? Or yeah. are my students better applying to the MSc in Crime Science and choosing one of the other three modules? No, I think it's open, like I said, multidisciplinary course. So we are open to lots of um, you know, varied backgrounds, students with varied backgrounds. However, I would say, again, because it's one of our more quantitative based um, courses, I would advise to demonstrate why you're choosing that pathway as opposed to others and how your background kind of suits that. So, for example, um, in what was the course you mentioned, criminology, I can imagine that there's um, quite a lot of research methods and um, analysis um of various types of data within an undergraduate course, which if you were to kind of draw upon in your application and say how it's well suited to data science, um, that would probably be quite favorable. Okay, and you could stay on. Uh, I'm gonna cover the crime science questions. Um, how many days are you expected to be in person on campus for the MSc in crime science? It varies. I think, you know, it, it, depending on your optional modules, you know, there's there's quite a few optional modules models in crime science. Of those ten hours, it can it can be that you're in every day and you have two hours every day, or it could be that you're in two days because the way the timetable in it works out that you have those it, it, two days as intense intensive kind of days and it fit everything in there. It really it varies from year to year and very much on your, your optional modules. I would say a minimum of two two days a week. Is there a timetable available somewhere? I'm not sure. I think um, you'd probably have to email. I don't know if maybe Julia can answer that or maybe. We'll to, to I think the best way is for you to email us uh, because I, generally speaking, timetables are not published um, to, for, for, for anybody to, to see that they're, they're, they're specific to the students. Yeah. Um, more crime science ones. Um, just looking at one more. How big is the intake for crime science with cybercrime? Um. Typically, you know, it's quite a new module. So initially, it was quite small, but now we've kind of run run it run it through its paces a bit. We, I think, we're anticipating thirty this year. I think we're targeting about thirty so compared to the crime science as a whole. Um, I think they're all quite similar now. To be honest, I think they're all around thirty thirty five. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay, so James, now a few for you. Uh, would the MSc in crime and forensic science course provide opportunities to understand and learn lab work in specific disciplines. Um, specific disciplines. So I'm I'm assuming that this means sort of laboratory techniques. This is not a laboratory based course. You won't be doing laboratory uh, modules and experiments and that kinds of thing. What you will be learning, and from the practical side of things, you'll be learning um, crime scene investigation. So you'll, if you choose that module. Uh, you'll be learning how to collect and recover evidence, um, dust for finger marks, those kinds of things. Um, you'll be learning how to use some some software um, uh, around that, that's used for interpreting evidence. Um, but it's not a laboratory course. You will be able to do some some um, experimental work for your your dissertations, um, but we focus very much more on the interpretation and presentation of evidence rather than the analysis. Okay, and during that, your MSc. Would there be opportunities to engage with the work of the Centre for the Forensic Sciences? Um, I presume that means the research yeah. work. Ongoing yeah, so, so we we are the, the Centre for the Forensic Sciences. It's housed within the department. So um, the academic staff that, um, uh, that, that, that do the, the research in, within the department are those people that, that teach you. Uh, as well so you will be um, exposed to the the research that that we do um, and you'll be supervised by those uh, researchers as well um, I think there was an additional question about PhDs afterwards some of our um, uh, MSc students have gone on to do uh, PhDs in in forensic science and and other fields within the department and beyond as well and for uh, Birta uh, so I'm especially interested in the crime and forensic science MSc and could you talk through some specific career options? Yep. So um, 
we'll stick with sort of forensic science and policing. I'll talk to you about some of the, the, the destinations that our um, graduates have, have, have gone on to. Um, so a number of our students go on to be uh, detectives. I mentioned the, the Met um, direct entry scheme, a number of our students um, have, have gone there and obviously people in their home countries as well. Um, we've had people go and be um, uh, crime scene investigators, uh, CSIs or SOCOs for various police forces in the UK and overseas. Increasingly, we're seeing people going into digital forensic science investigation. So working for police forces, uh, security agencies in, in the analysis and interpretation of digital um, forensics. So it's from computers, mobile phones, that kind of thing. We've had people go on to pursue uh, legal careers. People work for security services. And then outside of forensic science and policing, we've had people go on to work in, in, in other fields. So in um, consulting, um, in risk and banking as well. So you can you can kind of, apply the, the knowledge and the skills that you have directly to the field of forensic science or you can use the kind of more transferable critical thinking writing presentation communication skills and apply those to a to a different field so a really wide range of um career paths and it's not the case that you're going to come to do this degree and automatically go and become a bench forensic scientist doing dna analysis although we have had one or two people go on to do that Okay, uh, I'll answer one and then we'll go back to one. Um, this is for Giovanna. Uh, Giovanna, um, do you have scholarship opportunities for students from Latin America? None of the bursaries that I've mentioned from our department uh, cover uh, would would cover enough of the course. I think a uh, course fees for overseas to be worthwhile, but we don't restrict the twenty five hundred pounds that I was talking about is not restricted to UK students. So you're welcome to to apply for those, but um, overseas fees are obviously a lot, lot higher than UK fees. Would your professional experience in environmental crimes be useful if you apply, apply to the MSc in crime science? I think that is an absolute yes, because I know of colleagues who have studied environmental crimes, if that's what you mean by environmental crime. So I think that's an absolute yes. So this is one for uh, all of you. What are the acceptance rates? What sort of acceptance rates are you working on? What percentage of students who apply do you think are taken onto the course? Um, again, they vary every year. I, I think this is one that we probably would have to speak to the teaching and learning team about because they have the exact numbers. But um, we have, I, I can say in the last few years, we have, we are having increasing numbers of applications. Um, so, you know, it is competitive, which is why we want you to kind of really outline your skills and experience in the, pers in the personal statement. Um, but I don't have the exact percentages. I don't know if anyone else can contribute to that. But uh, we do have those numbers within the, the department. So if it's something you are interested in, um, let contact us and we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Okay. Right. Um, and this one is from Anonymous, uh, 10 years as a crime analyst, police crime analyst, 13 years in anti-piracy and corporate cyber. Are you overqualified? No, no, you're not overqualified at all. Uh, you know, we have people from across the age ranges, across the experience range, so not at all overqualified. Uh, Jotty, do you want to say something on that? Yeah, I'd, I'd just say it would depend on, um, uh, you, you would probably have a lot of practical experience, but what the what any of the masters, uh, whether it's the policing one or the crime science one, would give you is a, a different way of thinking, uh, 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 research skills and, and academic research skills. So they are slightly different from the kind of skills that you have. So depending upon what you want to do with the masters, definitely the masters could 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 contribute towards your personal growth. But it's it's entirely uh, dependent on what you want to do with that knowledge. So um, nobody really is overqualified, but it, it would just depend on what you want to gain from this masters. OK, um, it is going up to 7.30. We have no unanswered questions left in, in the Q&A. So I think it only remains for me to say thank you for coming along today and, and for learning about our programs. Um, a reminder once again that we have an in-person 
uh, open evening. If you want to come and see, meet us in person and see the UCL campus on the 27th of Feb, you can find out details from our, our website, the Department of Security and Crime Science website for that. Other than that, thank you to all of my colleagues and to the organizer, uh, Julia, for, for, for setting up this event. And do feel free to contact us via the emails uh, that you've been given if you have specific queries that we haven't answered today. Thank you very much.